Hello guys and welcome to today's discussion about uh, gene therapy. Okay, now we'll be talking about gene therapy in several video lectures. Now this is the first one of all of these lectures and in this particular video we'll be talking about the basics of gene therapy and why we at all do gene therapy and what is the future prospects of the gene therapy. In the subsequent videos we'll be discussing about uh, the application of gene therapy and individually we'll be dealing with uh, the gene therapy techniques and mechanisms utilizing different mediators or different carriers of the gene therapy such as viruses. Okay, so let's move on uh, in this particular lecture and talk about gene therapy. Now what is the background story? Uh, background story is that each of us carries a half a dozen of defective genes. This is a pretty, uh, this is a a uh, survey uh, result actually uh, all of us in fact uh, carries about half a dozen of defective genes and about one in ten people has or will develop at some stage or later an inherited genetic disorder and approximately 2800 specific conditions are known to be caused by defects in the just of patient's gene so if we are having only one gene there should be, there can be 2800 specific condition that can give a rise to a genetic disorder so by giving all this uh, informations to you I am trying to convince you that uh, it is pretty common to have a genetic disorder okay now for example cystic fibrosis is found in one out of every 2500 babies born in western world but not in case of our uh, world uh, of our uh, India and uh, Sri Lanka and Pakistan this this subcontinent region won't catch this cystic fibrosis but if we're talking about the western world uh, then cystic fibrosis is uh, one of uh, such diseases that thrive often okay let's move on now in the majority of cases one normal gene is sufficient to avoid all the disease symptoms that's a very basic concept right because what happens uh, for each of the diseases whatever we are getting whatever genetic makeup we are getting uh, there are two set of it because we are deployed so one set is coming from our mother another set is coming from our father okay so if one of this set of the gene is good is normal gene is disease free gene then it is sufficient to avoid all the symptoms of the disease but whenever we get something uh, that that is uh, affecting both uh, the set of the chromosome so if we are having defective genes from both our parents then it will end up with the diseases symptoms okay one uh, on the other hand if the gene is dominant it alone can produce the disease so we can look at it in two different ways is that if we are get one normal gene and if it is dominant then it is sufficient to prevent any disease symptom on the other hand if the gene is uh, dominant for the disease it alone can produce the disease instead of having one normal copy also okay so for example like Huntington's chorea which is a severe disease of new nervous system uh, becomes apparently only in the adulthood now this uh, Huntington's chorea is a neurodegenerative disease uh, which can ca cause us so so you can see here in the Huntington's chorea and how it is uh, transferring from one to another so this is uh, the Huntington's chorea disease we are looking at here in this case so we are having a normal mother uh, an affected dad so a dad here is the carrier for the disease right because dad one of the dad's chromosome is carrying the diseases for example it is autosomal dominant so we are not talking about sex chromosome we are not talking about x and y chromosomes right so it's simple autosomal inheritance okay so here each child is having one copy from his mother one copy from the father so during the course suppose two of those uh, new infant is having uh, the gene from his father okay so it get the disease so this is a type of a situation one where uh, one gene uh, from from uh, the parent can cause this diseases because uh, this is a dominant disease uh, disorder okay so it's also autosomal dominant inheritance on the other hand if you're talking about the x chromosomes or the sex linked inheritance so in this case for example hemophilia so here again uh, look at hemophilia so father with the hemophilia so example here the father is having the hemophilia in this case mother is normal because father is having only x so father developed the hemophilia now this 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 hemophilia gene is a x chromosomal inheritance pattern so that means let let, let me take a color here okay now what uh, uh, actually about hemophilia is that hemophilia is X linked or X chromosome linked inheritance. So what it happens in hemophilia is that uh, if uh, the, the hemophilia gene 
uh, disease gene is present in X chromosome. Okay, so uh, the X chromosome of this father is having this disease. So, uh, so it is having this gene, so it is having the disease. Though it is having a normal Y, but it won't bother. Now, if you cross with an, uh, if it is uh, mated with a mother, normal mother, so it's not a carrier, so it's normal, right? So, mother is having both of these X. Now, X are fair, okay? But what you get here, the son, one of his son is uh, having no none none of this gene, so it is fine. But one of his daughter is getting this X and one X, uh, one normal X from the mother, but one affected X from the father. So what it end up with, it end up, ends up with one X is normal, another X is having the hemophilia gene. Okay, but still this daughter is not affected by the disease. Why? Because it is having one defective X, but it is having another normal X. To compensate the ac action of this X gene. Okay, so it is having one normal, so it is fine. Remember, so here we can see one normal gene is sufficient to avoid all the symptoms of the disease. And here we uh, prove this. But in, on the other hand, one gene, if the disease is a dominant gene, so it, if the gene is dominant, it can also produce a disease. You can see here in case of the autosomal dominant, in case of Huntington's chorea. So we have seen two different examples. This is the first one, this is the second one. Okay, let us move on. Now, what is the history of this uh, gene transfer? What is the history of this uh, gene therapy? Now, let me first tell you about uh, the basic thing about gene therapy. It constructs something like that. So, gene therapy always means that it's a transfer of gene. So, what we are doing via gene therapy, we are uh, transferring a normal copy of gene onto uh, the genome. And it is replacing the old bad copy of the gene. So the diseased copy of the gene is replaced with the new copy we, we, we are trying to insert. Okay, so we are trying to insert a new copy of gene instead of the old. So if this is the old copy of the gene, so this is the region where the old copy of the gene presents. So what it is doing here, we place a new copy and this new copy is replacing the old one. Okay, so the red one is the new copy replacing the old uh, diseased copy. So at the end of the day, we produce the normal copy of the gene, right? So this is what we are trying to do using the gene therapy. Now in early 1970s, scientists proposed the gene uh, surgery theory. Okay, there's a proposal of the gene surgery. But in 1984, uh, 83 actually, a group of scientists uh, from Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Houston, Texas, uh, proposed gene therapy for leash nehan disease. Now leash nehan disease is a very, very, uh, very, very rude, ruthless uh, genetic disorder where the infants try to eat their own own flesh like that so it's a very very weird kind of uh, weird kind of uh, disorder but whatever the first time it is uh, trying to develop but on the september 14 1990 it's a year it's a day a four-year-old girl suffering from a genetic disorder that prevented her body from producing a crucial enzyme become the first person to undergo the gene therapy in u.s so this is the day september 14 1990 is the day where the for the first time the gene therapy is being used in u.s so you can see gene therapy is not a very old technique it is only 23 years old now if we are calculating only 23 years old so it is not a old technique it's a new technique far enough now okay but <clears throat> what is happening uh, this gene therapy uh, is utilized in many occasions but still I'm uh, telling you some important facts that this gene therapy never found that much useful never found that much useful that we can adopt it because uh, if you look into the history of medical history or history where uh, medical sciences are going uh, the medical science is evolving so rapidly so in this past 23 years 23 years for uh, the young medical science is too much time to develop itself into a giant but in case of this gene therapy it is still that much not that much uh, prosperous because the gene therapy techniques we utilize and the results we get are not that much sufficient it is not that much satisfactory in most of the cases okay in few cases we are pretty good but most of the cases we are not uh, the results are not satisfactory so that's why the development is not that much appreciated so presently the gene therapies for the following diseases are being developed now actually diseases like cystic fibrosis hiv infection and several types of cancers cancers like malignant melanoma kidney cancer breast cancer and lung cancer okay 
Now the medical has contributed to a transgenic research that is supported by the government funding. And most of the part of the gene therapy research are going on in the United States because the United States government are giving constant funding for that. And on the other hand, uh, Germany and UK are doing some of the research. But on the other hand, on the other regions of the world, gene therapy is a little bit much more cost effective. So uh, uh, they won't uh, uh, actually doing active research on this gene therapy. So this is another region for uh, not developing so much. Now what is the basic process of the gene therapy? Now the gene therapy is uh, simply the insertion, alteration or removal of genes within an individual cells and bi biological tissue to treat any disease. Now this insertion, alteration or removal. So suppose we are having a chromosome and inside the chromosome we are having a faulty gene. Now if we can remove this faulty gene and insert a new normal gene into the place of this faulty gene, we can cure the disease, right? So this, there lies the basic concept of the gene therapy. So it's simply the genetic transfer, the normal gene transfer instead of the corrupted copy. Now it is a technique for correcting defective genes that are responsible for the disease development. Okay. Now the most common form of gene therapy involves the insertion of functional genes into the unspecified genome, unspecified genomic locations in order to replace the mutant gene. So two approaches could be done. One is that we can incorporate, we can insert the functional gene instead of uh, some, some, uh, some, some in unspecified genomic location. It's not a specific, it's unspecified genomic location. Now this can replace uh, the activity of the mutant gene. Or what we can do, we can directly correcting the mutation by removing that gene or by substituting that gene at that particular location. So we can go in, in, in these two different ways. Now, uh, the, if we are giving the pictorial representation, we can find something like that. We are having the chromosome. Now here says this is the defective gene. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so suppose not, uh, say this is the chromosome. And there somewhere in this chromosome lies this defective gene. Now we need to replace this defective gene. Now what we can do, suppose this is a particular cell line. Now we take a normal cells of that same cell type. So say this is a normal cell chromosome and we are choosing the same gene, the normal variety of the, the normal version of that gene uh, onto this normal cell line. We take the normal gene, we amplify that gene and produce a large copy of the gene. And what we are doing here, let me change the color. What we are doing, we are taking this gene and insert it into the chromosome of the diseased cell. And what it will do, it will replace uh, that faulty gene. Okay. So this technique, if we, ca we can carry this technique, this technique uh, is a simple process of gene therapy. And if we do this technique in, in say, in a lab petri plate in different cell lines, we call them ex vivo gene therapy. Now this is very important term, ex vivo gene therapy. Now for uh, the further discussion, you must know what is the difference between in vivo, ex vivo, in vitro, like that, right? So in vivo, vivo means inside the cell. So in vivo means when you are doing directly into an organism's body. It is called the in vivo technique. On the other hand, the ex vivo means what we are doing is not directly into the organism's body. Instead, we are doing it inside the lab petri dish but still we are having the cell lines okay for example if we are doing this uh, so if we are replacing a gene uh, present in our lungs for the lung cancer disease for example say or in the liver for example so we can utilize in vivo technique to directly incorporate that gene inside the liver uh, in that organism in the whole organism it will call in vivo technique on the other hand suppose we are culturing these liver cells in the petri plate then we uh, amplify this normal copy and insert it into this uh, cell, uh, into the petri plate. So instead, we are not doing it in a whole organism's body, but instead we are doing it in, inside the petri plate, but in the same cell line on the artificial manner. And in this case, it will be called ex vivo technique. Okay. On the other hand, a term is often related to the ex vivo or people can... Uh, uh, mix these two terms in called in vitro. In vitro. In vitro is also artificial technique. It is not again uh, inside the whole body. But the difference is that in in vitro we are doing it inside a test tube. 
okay the inside the test tube where where no cell cultures are there no cell lines are there but what we are doing we are creating the whole environment on our own but in case of ex vivo techniques we won't create the environment on our own the environment is again normal it's natural it's the cell line that we are using okay but in vitro we are utilizing uh, some chemicals and we are producing the environment we incorporate we simulate the cellular environment and doing the job okay